Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, take us away here. Um, Wonderful. You're, you've been on a uh, on a journey here where uh, I think a lot of companies want to go in terms of of getting people to drive uh, decision making uh, from more driven by data, more driven by analytics, and uh, so take us on that journey. Wonderful. I will uh, <coughs> try to give you a sense for what we are doing at uh, PNG in business intelligence and um, uh, in analytics, and hopefully give you a concrete uh, example on how that applies to create concrete, concrete business value. The, um, I will make a very long, long story short. We'll cover probably no more than uh, 15 minutes so that we have uh, plenty of time for um, an interaction, which is the more uh, interesting uh, part for me rather than uh, a boring uh, monologue. But um, I have to give you a little bit of the how we got to this point, where are we now, and importantly, where we are uh, uh, heading. I hope I will give you a sense of the story behind the story and, um, and importantly, the context in addition to the content of um, uh, what we're doing. Uh, so with that, um, uh, quick um, sense for where we are uh, in PNG, uh, shared services, anticipating what is needed and then real-time um, analytics. A short summary on uh, PNG. We've been in business for 175 years, and everything we do is to continue to do well for another 175. So, so analytics, business intelligence, as I will uh, try to articulate, is very much part of that. Uh, one interesting data point on this uh, chart is the number of consumers we serve worldwide. Uh, we are, of course, a consumer company, people company. So we want to be where consumers are, where people are. And as you can see, we reach uh, today, uh, we're approaching 5 billion um, consumers. We want to reach about 6 billion of the 7 billion consumer in total worldwide over the next few years. And, and importantly, 3 billion times a day, uh, a person in the world, consumer in the world, will buy uh, one of our products. So from a business intelligence, from a massive uh, quantity of, of data and the ability to make sense out of that, it is, um, it is uh, extremely important. The, this is a summary of the top 50 uh, leadership uh, brands. I hope you recognize all of them. In fact, I hope you are dependent on some of them. You could not live without these brands. Um, and um, I was commenting with uh, Chris that I noticed there are four people here in this room who are not using Gillette, and we need to fix it as fast as possible. <laughs> but um, uh, importantly, of these uh, 50 brands, uh, 26 are what we call over a billion dollar brands, you know, in excess of sales uh, of one billion dollars a year now. Uh, now Pomper says uh, approaching $10 billion, so several brands are about um, $1 billion. This is in summary the organization uh, uh, structure. From the left we have uh, uh, the global business units, they are responsible for, uh, for R&D manufacturing. Uh, brand uh, marketing uh, concepts uh, worldwide. The PNL uh, resides in that uh, area. This is very important because it shows how we truly operate globally. This is by brand, by category. On the second from the left is where we commercialize uh, locally. So we have uh, what we call market organization in every single country, uh, pretty much worldwide. The third from the left, um, it is uh, highlighted because uh, it is us, and that's what I do for uh, for living. And um, we integrated as uh, Chris indicated, the shared services and IT. And that has been a very, uh, 
interesting uh, move for us because it has allowed IT to become less of an enabler and more of an accountable organization for concrete business uh, results. And so we, we can talk more about that as we got into Q&As, but this is you know, considered uh, pretty much a unique model in scope and in the way we uh, as, uh, assemble that, and that this is one of the reasons why we're doing what we're doing in business intelligence and uh, in analytics. With that, uh, our mission, in addition to running uh, services, low cost, uh, reliably, and good service levels, you know, fundamentally what we want to stand for, for uh, Procter & Gamble, is to transform the way business is done, and, uh, and all the rest comes from there. So our focus is completely on, uh, on tangible, measurable business results in number of things we do. We have um, a fixation about that. It's never about uh, the latest um, technology with a lot, of, a lot of potential. It is about how to drive uh, business value. And so we have um, an intentional um, obsession for uh, staying relevant. And, and, and the reason why I feel so strong, we feel so strong about it, is because the one thing we want to avoid uh, uh, you know, at any cost is uh, becoming a commodity. Because if we become a commodity, it is all about, uh, it's, it's about cost, cost reduction. While we believe that we have to create value, we can create value from, from a technology standpoint, and importantly, technology as an enabler to build new, new, new business models. And this is what I will try to articulate as we deep dive on analytics and business um, intelligence. So to, to give you a sense for how we got to this point, and uh, we, 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 we at some point thought it's not about running faster and faster with the latest uh, technology, with uh, people being 24 by seven up and always connected because there is a point where we would, we would break the back of the camel. We, we thought it was important to change uh, the way we run. And so we came up with three, uh, with three strategies a few days ago. One is uh, a lot of focus on uh, visualization. I, I believe uh, in a complex world, in a world that is ambiguous, where there is a lot of um, volatility and an incredible amount of information, visualization helps distill down what really matters. So as you can see, the picture on the back is the way we used to do reporting uh, way back. Um, the one in the front of uh, the cockpit is the way we do reporting now. There is alerts, so there, uh, there is color coding. 60,000 employees now receive the same version of the, of the truth. And, and instantaneously, and so there is, this is what I call information democracy. Everybody gets the same data at the same time. There is not a lot of uh, massaging up to management, um, and, uh, and this has enabled uh, a lot of real time in you know, all we do, and importantly, managing by exception uh, our business. So there is, as you can see, control charts. There is, uh, everything has become much more um, automated in that respect. The second strategy was um, uh, visualization and virtual reality. What you see here is a virtual shelf. So all the consumer focus groups on new packaging, reaction, what they like of a new, uh, of a new product, or suggestions they have on the artwork, on uh, the bottle, on the eighth, on the cat. Uh, is not done physically any longer. We used to do mock-ups, which would have a cycle time of uh, six, uh, seven weeks. Now we have virtualized all of that. Over 80% of our business is done this way, almost 90%. And um, this has compressed, this has reduced the speed of um, innovation to market, product innovation to market significantly, because of course we do in hours what otherwise would take weeks. 
and we have saved uh, a lot of dollars by not having to build every time a physical shelf, buy all the competitive, uh, competitive products, but we have everything uh, virtual and a consumer makes a comment on the position on the shelf and we can change on the fly, we can readjust on the fly and in fact calculate a revenue creation from that uh, from that change pretty much on the fly. And then, of course, the third uh, strategy was uh, simulation uh, modeling. So uh, as you can see, the whole theme here is about accelerating uh, product innovation to market, is about simulating in advance, is about using uh, visualization. So that was a few years ago, three, four years ago. You know, these are three strategies of digitize, visualize, simulate, but now we, we said we need to move to a new uh, era, and the era is running the business real time. And uh, it's not about looking at what happened last week, last month, last quarter. It is about predicting what is going to happen. And that's how we evolved over the last couple of years into a massive focus on uh, business intelligence um, and analytics. This is an interesting chart uh, from the MIT, a study conducted about uh, a year ago, which highlights um, how things are evolving in this area. Here is in uh, uh, ranking uh, order what uh, companies used to invest in the area of, uh, of business uh, reporting and uh, business information. So, so you can see from the top to the bottom where companies were investing. This is where it is predicted to evolve over the next two, three years. So as you can see, standardized reporting or uh, uh, historic uh, trend analysis, which used to be at the top over the next two, three years, will become uh, relatively less important. Areas like uh, data visualization, analytics applied to specific uh, business processes to increase uh, cycle time are moving to the top. We are considering at this point, uh, right or wrong, pretty much the leading edge in uh, this area. So, so all we try to do is to continue to push the envelope and continue to, to invent, uh, to transform the way business is done. But this. The study gives us confirmation that we are on the right path and that the areas we are now focusing on are really what uh, the industry at large considers um, very, very important, which we heard also this morning from some of the other, uh, other speakers. So with that, um, Let's do a deep dive into real-time um, analytics. I will try to take you in literally two, three minutes through a concrete business business case. So will be will be a case study. Um, of course, we will not do full justice in uh, in two, three minutes to, to, to what a long story will be. But I hope I will give you a sense of how tools combine and integrate with uh, business and, and with the organization. A, a lot was uh, talked uh, this morning on the uh, readiness of uh, people, how the organizations mature, do they have the right skills. I hope I will give you a sense here of how the culture, the organization, the model, and the tools will all, uh, will all come uh, together. So with that, um, the model we have is what we call the what, the why, and the how. First of all, we have to agree on what is the what. And I believe many of you will relate to the comment uh, I'm making now, which is um, in a business review, in a business meeting, we used to spend a lot of time talking, you know, first and foremost, what? What is going on? What are the numbers? What is? And um, we said, look, we want to ad automate all of that. There is one version of the number that is the Bible. Everyone will relate to that. And so first and foremost, the focus was on um, automating the um, making real time the what. Then why is it happening? What is happening? There are many drivers, and again, this is the example I will give you in a minute. 
uh, why is that happening, and um, and that is really where the business um, value comes because you analyze what you have to intervene, what you have to do, and third, and most importantly, then how to improve, what to do, what are the actions we as leaders have to take. So with this um, model in mind, which we thought uh, allowed us to, to create a powerful framework for also standardize the way we do business across the world and in doing so eliminating fragmentation, duplication. Um, we, we said uh, real-time analytics are fundamental to, to, to support that model because first and foremost it is about managing the, the business by exceptions with an alert, so you know, no news, good news, but if there is an alert, you want to be notified um, immediately. Second, it is not about, as I said, looking at what happened last month, it's about predicting to the extent possible what is going to happen in the future. And third, it is about business reviews, business discussions, deep dives on business issues, which are leading to better and faster decisions. And we do measure all of that, because this is an area that, in my experience, can become uh, fluffy uh, pretty soon. And so it is very critical to be very, very rigorous uh, in all of that. So the, 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 the idea we have is what we call the power of and. Uh, you know, one plus one pl uh, plus one equals five. So yes, it is analytics models, but it is importantly an immersive environment where business discussions take place. So it's not about uh, printing out uh, analytics uh, r uh, results or, uh, or giving different tools to, uh, to different people. It's about creating an environment conducive to have a business uh, review and third is the business uh, analyst, an expert which is unbiased and leads the business team in the uh, in the proper discussion. We believe the synergy between these uh, three components is in many ways a breakthrough, and this is what we've been doing. So. In the case of business sphere, which is the visualization part, uh, we have deployed about uh, 50 of these um, spheres around the world. So as you can see, we call it a sphere because it gives a sense of being immersed in a, in a, in a sphere environment. You have real-time data, ability to do deep dives. I will give you um, the case study in a second. And then from there, it is... Um, uh, you know, the team is in the room, the business team is in the room with all the functional uh, representation with the GM, with, and they will go into analyzing in detail what is happening, why is that happening, and how to improve uh, what we're doing. So the, the example I will take here to go into the final two minutes of my, uh, of my part is on... Um, uh, one of the key components of, uh, of delivering, uh, driving uh, shareholders' return. Uh, of course, there are you know, many elements. So there is uh, uh, profitability, margins, uh, revenues. I want to focus here on one which is uh, critical for us, which is market shares market shares. For, for, for us, continue to grow market shares in any business, I believe, but in particular um, in business like ours is so, so critical. So let me give you an example of that. This is one of the visual uh, models we created. Uh, you see different companies there, PNG is on the right. The um, blue symbol is uh, is pricing, and you say the periods is a uh, past 12 months, six months, three months, one month. So you can see the trend of shares, market shares over time. In red, you have um, the shares themselves. And so you say how the two correlate, because of course there is a strong interdependence between shelf price and uh, market shares. Then um, if you click on uh, P&G highlighted in uh, black there, then you see on the left by uh, region what we're doing. 
And so again, green is good, uh, red is the region that is contributing negatively to, to, to the shares. And on the right, category by category, which, which ones are creating positive shares, contributing to adding shares, growing shares, and which ones are detracting shares from that particular business. Well, now, with that done, you, you um, analyze per each intersection, country, uh, and category what is going on. The, of course, uh, green is good, helping shares growth. Uh, red is <laughs> shares decrease. Red is not good. Red is an alert. The, um, you see there all the different uh, combinations, the shades in green and red uh, highlight how how good is good or you know, how bad is bad. Uh, and, um, and importantly, the size of the uh, area indicates the, the contribution or else to the share growth. So if we take uh, US uh, and category term, which is the box in the top um, left, uh, you, uh, we do a deep dive on that. We will say that um, for this particular category country combination, value shares uh, and um, the volume shares at the top are all moving in a certain direction. They are consistent, which is important. Then at the top, you say a deep dive on category uh, and channels. And um, as you can see, one of them, the one in the middle, uh, HFS, high frequency stores in developing markets uh, uh, for the uh, area six. And of course, all these numbers, as you can imagine, are, uh, uh, have been uh, uh, made up for, for, uh, for illustration of this, uh, of this case study. That, 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 that's why we call the category by number and all the rest, but you understand uh, all of that. So the HFS in area six is having an issue, so we can, uh, we can, uh, we can deep dive on that. And importantly, you know, shares fundamentally are, are driven by um, uh, each one of the commercial initiatives we run. A commercial initiative can, can be a new launch of a new, of a new, of a new brand, it could, could be new packaging, could be new ideas. So, so there we say uh, that 75% uh, about of our initiative are in the in a good uh, in a good place. 25% are red. Then if we go to the extreme right of the chart, we see of all the media channels, which one is contributing, how do we allocate spend, because this is in the end one of the key uh, shared drivers. And then we see uh, the pricing drivers. So in green, um, you see our increases in price, in pink, in red, a mix. So how much we sell, um, revenue per, uh, uh, per individual product. And so we can say how much uh, a price uh, sticks or else if we have to make uh, an intervention there. And then on the right, bottom right, uh, right corner, that there is all the in-store um, fundamentals. So, so we have, uh, of course, uh, features, shelving, pricing, phases, uh, share of shelf. And all these variables are the ones that ultimately influence uh, market shares. And so we see the why it is happening, what is happening. So not only we have the what, but we have the why. And the why is automatically generated, is it real time. And so what is different here versus what we used to do three, four, five years ago is that all this data is coming into the context of what the business discussion is, is coming together. So it is not fragmented by geography, by management level, by, and importantly, it's coming real time to improve decisions uh, better and faster in every single business review we have. So these are the three key differences and the reason why we believe um, this approach uh, so far has been, and we hope will be more and more so, 
pretty uh, transformational in the way we do business. So with that, I hope I was able to give you a sense for where we're coming from, how we got to this point, what is a concrete um, example of uh, driving analytics in a, in a conducive, immersive, uh, sphere environment. So you imagine all of that happening in a business sphere with the management team, with the business team, together discussing, talking, analyzing what is going on, and then importantly, the real time um, of all of that. So I'm going to uh, stop here in the spirit of moving into uh, the part that uh, matters most, which is the interaction. And I would, of course, um, very much appreciate and value and um, any thoughts, any suggestions, or, uh, or any questions you might have. Well, that was great. Uh, I think it gives a great picture of what, where you've come. Uh, there's one area I wanted to put a spotlight on. Uh, you know, I can see pic picture people being in the audience and thinking, okay, that's where I want to go, or I need to do more of that data visualization. Uh, but first, I've got to get the, the data in-house better uh, before I do that. And uh, I want to kind of spotlight your strategy for that data perfection. Uh, you know, so you picture these eight-foot screens. The CEO and the executive yeah. team are, are discussing the data up there. But you, you intentionally created the, the visualization environment before you had, well, basically you knew that data wasn't going to be perfect. That they were going to ask questions and say, I want to know this, and they wouldn't have the answer. How did you deal with the... The, the data, your cart before the horse kind of strategy yeah, for, exactly. for data. Exactly, that's what, uh, Chris, we talked uh, in a different occasion. I believe there are situations in business where it is necessary, it is uh, strategic to put the cart before the horse because uh, otherwise uh, the horse will never come. And um, this is an area where we have tried for years to build a complete uh, data warehouse with all the data, you know, the, the, the very granular level standardization. We have succeeded to an extent. But the issue here is that if there is not a clear incentive for the business to invest, that will never happen will never happen. So I've come to the conclusion that there are two different uh, schools of uh, thought. One is you have to be absolutely perfect with the data before you can do any um, analytics because otherwise that you know, doesn't make any sense. It's like uh, building on uh, sand. The other uh, school of thought is that you need to get to a point where you have enough, but not necessarily all. And then with the moment you create an attractive uh, vision for the business, and the business will say, yes, you know, if I had it, it would really be wonderful, so now let me invest. Then all the data feeders, all the automation will come as a result of that, because you have a catalyst for creating um, convergence. So that's what we have done. When we started, probably we had, I don't know, I would say 50, 60 percent of the data already automated. For the balance, we did a lot of uh, manual work in the uh, back office. And progressively, that created an incentive for our business leaders to be very supportive because they saw what was possible if we got to the point that they could. Uh, experience. So we need to take people through an experience. Otherwise, if it is a theoretical, or if it is numbers on paper, will never will never work. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the other piece I wanted to ask you about. So that's the data piece about the the people piece of it. You, you and I talked also about the uh, your plan to quadruple the number of people in your organization that have business analytics expertise or uh, uh, insight. Uh, could you explain why, why that was important and how far you are on that journey? Well, we decided um, to, be, to be intentional and to be bold. And we said, if we are to make a difference in this area, it's not about investing 20% more or, or uh, try to push and pull a little bit here and there. We said we have to make a declaration that we are increased by fourfold uh, our 
our capacity in uh, this area. So, so we are retooling, retraining many of our people. We are hiring new people with the expertise um, in analytics, um, in, uh, in business analysis, and we are increasing dramatically the number of people we have in this area. And they are, they, 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 these are people who build uh, models, who build um, capabilities, but these are also people, business uh, analysts, who sit in these uh, uh, business discussions, in these business reviews, that they help prepare and frame the, the, the whole flow of the discussion. It, as I said before, this is one of the three components which we believe make synergistic the, the entire model. So, so we did decide to, to, to be very, very decisive in this area. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe uh, now's a good time to, to ask some uh, feedback from the commentary desk. Uh, Mike, I see you nodding your head. Uh, do you have some questions for... I just first off, thanks for sharing this. It's just a fascinating story, and uh, and is terrific insight into what you've done. But one of the things that goes through my head is just in the last discussion you were just not, you just had around business analysts. How can you talk about how you get from spreadsheets to such creative type of analytical <coughs> output? Because you know my experience has been if you bring people that are very used to spreadsheets into a room and say, imagine how you could have this information to draw a better understanding out, I get sketches of spreadsheets, right? So you've got you know, tremendous sort of <coughs> thought that's gone into um, the, the, you know, analytics and visualization strategies that help create much better understanding of the underlying sort of business events that, are, you know, that it, the data represents. How did, how did you do that? Yeah, that's a very good question. I, um, first of all, to give a number, we have eliminated 88% uh, of our standard reports, about um, 20,000. And um, we have done that with, with a, an approach of a pull uh, versus push. Again, we created uh, an attractive uh, cockpit. People loved it. People thought it was much more immediate to, to, to get to that information than uh, getting an Excel uh, uh, via email. Then, you know, very candidly, because we are pretty much in control of the, uh, of the steam, we, we also decided to discontinue sunset some of the legacy systems we had. So that was a way to force uh, people over the hump. And um, third, what we did was to aggregate to the extent some uh, operating business units had their own uh, path uh, uh, reports. We brought all of them together under an electronic fact book, you know, uh, pretty much as is where it is. And once we were in control of the total, then we were able to optimize and, and uh, improve, eliminate, um, standardize. So, so, so our philosophy is always, first of all, we need to become accountable and to stay in control. And once we do it, then all the rest um, will, um, will follow. Just one follow-on. To, to come up with some of the new views that you had, did you bring people from outside in or use examples that you know, people hadn't seen before within the company to sort of give them the, you know, what the art of the possible might be? Yeah, the, so if I understand your question correctly, I think you're raising another <laughs> very interesting point. Uh, I was telling uh, Chris in the backstage that <clears throat> we, we, we don't really ask uh, ourselves the question of uh, buy versus build. We, we, we don't do that. The only question we ask uh, ourselves uh, every day is how relevant this is um, on the business and all the rest is, you know, comes uh, after that. So um, what we have done here, we, we by definition, unless we have to, we have to, we don't build because we believe that if you work for a company like um, P&G, you are not in the uh, software business. We are in creating business models which are built on new, uh, on new technologies. So we created a strategic 
uh, alliances with a number of partners. Uh, some of them specialize in this area. Some of them we bought uh, a stake in those companies. Uh, some of them startup companies. Some of them companies who have uh, new technologies. But fundamentally, we aggregate technology and we even have IP protection in, in many of these uh, tools, not because the technologies are unique, these are all commercial technologies, but in the way they were assembled and the way the business model was uh, created. So Business Sphere, as an example, is made of 12 different um, technology components. None of them we created in-house, but the way we uh, assemble those uh, technology is where the intellectual intellectual capital is. So I think Felipe, I had a question for you. Um, how did you get people to utilize the data? Uh, it was interesting. Our, I think last year for the Info Week 500, we focused a lot on visual data and what happens when you get so much of it, and how do you process it? How do you What's IT's partnership with the business in teaching them how to use the data that you're putting out in visual format? Yes, the answer is yes. And to be very, and to be very candid, there is a lot of uh, hand-holding. There is a lot of hand-holding. So we don't believe, we don't think, we believe it's not realistic that you deploy a new uh, capability, no matter how good, um, may it be, and all of a sudden there is a, an adoption which is uh, instantaneous. We, in my experience, we all have been in this business so, for so many years. It always takes a bit of um, a bit of help. So yes, there has been a lot of working with uh, with um, the business units. There are a lot of one-on-one -on -one discussions, uh, and a huge number of one-on-one -on -one discussions. There has been a lot of. Uh, initially penetrating the individual business um, uh, problems, issues, and trying to make sense uh, out of them. Uh, so working with them to, to give a sense of uh, value in what we were doing. Think of your questions you want as well. And uh, Jerry, did you have one before we? I, I have so many questions. I was struggling trying to figure <laughs> out which one to ask. But um, let me let me ask this one, Filippo. Um, you mentioned three years ago the the IT world was uh, at, at PG&E was one of digitizing, visualizing, and simulating. And and then today you're talking about real time. And what I saw was um, some very impressive drill down eye candy visualizations for understanding what is and what's happening. What I didn't see is um, tools to answer the question of what if. So my question then is: is are you is your is your next step then to do real real time simulation of those what if questions? Yes, we are, and um, so that, because now then the question becomes uh, real time and becomes how much we can begin to integrate this different. Uh, uh, technologies and tools, and I will give you a very specific uh, illustration of that. If you take the virtual shelf, as um, we move uh, products around, you know, we call uh, block shelfing, when you have, for example, uh, conditioner uh, shampoo together, because we know that works better for consumers, for retailers, and for us. So then you can see how by moving uh, in the virtual shelf all these, uh, all these SKUs around, then the revenue opportunity for our retail customers changes. And so that will give an incentive to them to, 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 to uh, do what is right for consumer, for us, or for them. And this is, um, and this is uh, an illustration of how you can bring together, we can bring together analytics because you change on the fly the, the layout with consumer relevance and with um, value for, uh, for the business. So that was, I think, a very good, um, a very good point you made. Your questions. Uh, I have plenty. I can ask uh, more as well. And I... <laughs> But one up front, others. Oh, 
What are some of the keys to the uh, real-time performance in terms of your architecture? How did you, how did you get real-time data? The, the way we got, uh, we, we have, uh, from an architecture standpoint, we are pretty much on a standard uh, SAP platform. We have, uh, we are probably, according to, to, to SAP, one of the most uh, standard um, clients they have in the world. So we have one instance for uh, accounting systems, one instance for manufacturing systems. And um, we have um, a number of Oracle uh, uh, data warehouses, uh, uh, and extra data that allows us to, to uh, support uh, this uh, real-time information. What we are seeing now, once you have this model, so let me build on let me build on your question, is that the data really becomes the bottleneck. So you uh, discover one bottleneck at a time. First was a technology and tools. Now it is the ability to get data which are not within um, PNG, like an example is uh, uh, point of sales uh, data, you know, we will get from some customers daily, from some customers uh, weekly, a different level of detail. And um, so that is creating a little bit of a bottleneck here and there, market uh, data from Nelson, you know, it is a little bit of, a, of, a, of that. So uh, as always, I think we can turn an issue into an opportunity. Once we know where the bottleneck is, then we force a change in that particular uh, area. So, so to, to, to your question, one way to think about it is how can we constantly discover what the next bottleneck is and then how can we go after it in, a, in an intentional fashion? Did I answer your question? Perfect. You know, the, the, uh, you mentioned global. Uh, Environment obviously Procter and Gamble is uh, those those simulations show us those are global market shares that you're studying. What kind of collaboration tools have you put in place to bring people together around the around the world? You you want the decision makers, the right people, to be together. Uh, yeah, we have uh, <clears throat> we are pushing. Uh, this is a different chapter, but we are pushing. Um, a lot on uh, video collaboration, uh, so pervasive video, all employees, all sites. So I will not go into naming vendors here, as you can imagine, for, for a number of reasons. But um, we are in. Uh, we have declared that um, all uh, rooms in Procter and Gamble worldwide, all employees will be video enabled now. One may say, and so what? You know, what is different between a phone call and a video collaboration? Um, my hypothesis is that um, it makes a tremendous difference to talk to somebody in person and talk to somebody. I mean, you know it. When you use uh, FaceTime with your family, it's completely different when you talk to your kids or your wife on the phone. It, it is a different experience and that's why people use a Skype so much although the quality is not simply not, not, not always um, outstanding because there is something in there so we are enabling uh, Chris all of that that is the platform upon which uh, collaboration and also a lot of cost of reduction will be will be based we have there. Filippo, a quick question. You, you mentioned that you have to handhold some of the businesses. I'm wondering how you've uh, structured the organization of consultancy to go into that, so skills, not your typical IT kind of consultant. Yeah, but good question. It is a great, um, a great point. You know, to be totally sincere, I have seen the following, and I will use these numbers in a rounded fashion. When we declare there's a significant uh, cultural change, when we declare we want to run as a business, I, I was in line management. I ran uh, a country for um, PNG as part of my uh, cleansing my soul prior to this <laughs> job, and uh, and I. Um, and I remember that every year I had to deliver better shares, better volume, and better profit. It was not 
and either one is one was not what you like better was and 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 so we right we apply the same model to this and uh, is a, is a and lower cost and better service levels and more value creation is not one or the other and um, people responded well then we created the tools the cultural changes but at the end of the day um, uh, I would say and I'm using these numbers as a ballpark seven to percent of the people were very ready to uh, embrace the change. All they needed was the framework and the vision. And 20% of the people um, were prepared, but they needed uh, a lot of help. And the other 10% either didn't have uh, any interest or, or were not prepared to go through the uh, effort. And so, of course, they chose to, to, uh, to do something different in life. Um, but that created a very clear, different reward system, a different uh, value system. That, uh, so, so your question is, is very important, is all the cultural, organizational part. I think we have one more and then we're up Okay. time. Quick question, quick answer. Okay, um, very interesting. And you have so much data in so many countries. Uh, have you had any success of combining the structured and unstructured data? I'm thinking in terms of sentiment and analytics, yep. and you have so many different languages that you have to handle and cultures and all yeah, that. Yeah, it is. Uh, I've come to this conclusion, and um, and uh, we are working on that. We don't know yet how to, but you know, all breakthroughs start with a vision, with an idea, and then we work backwards how to get there. I believe that there is nothing more important for us than to be able to predict when we launch a new initiative, a new brand, a new product, a new packaging, how this initiative will be doing. And so far for companies like us, you cannot read it in the market for four or two, three months because you need to get consumption data, point of sales data, you need to... So my hypothesis is that there is a strong uh, correlation between what happens online and what is going to happen in store. So when we launch a brand today, if we were able to say, look, you know, we had so many comments online, we had so much reaction, positive or negative, and, and we would be able to correlate that to what is going to happen um, offline in store, that would be that would be terrific. So the crack we have not, uh, the not we have not been able to crack yet. It is. Um, the, the, Exactly what you're talking, and I believe that is the next stage of uh, breakthrough opportunity. It's not much selling online e-commerce, which we, of course, we also do. It is about how to use the immediacy, the, the ultimate real timeliness of um, online uh, social data to then predict what is going to happen uh, offline in store, which is where we continue to, of course, to sell. Uh, 99% of our of our revenue. So, so it was a very good question. Hey, hey, Chris, I very much appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. Great insights, terrific. We thank you for being here. Uh, please thank you very join much. me in thanking uh, thank our Thank you very guys. much, Paul. Thank you.